welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be sharing with you my experience flying first class on two different airlines on a recent trip where we flew first class to and from Hawaii and then from Disneyland back home. And we're going to break down everything from vibes to service to food and drink to comfort non-scale victories for both airlines so we can compare and contrast. I want you to have a real inside look at what it's like to fly first class on either or both of these airlines so you can decide for yourself. If you are flying from East Coast to West Coast anytime soon, that could be all the way out to Oahu or just simply to Disneyland, this video really is for you to help you with the decisions about is it worth it. And if you're here for weight loss surgery content, don't you worry. We're building in non-scale victories for flights and flying. However, I will refer you to all of the videos for the rest of October, which are very much weight loss surgery driven. And I hope you will be subscribed for all of the weight loss surgery content coming up in November and December, as well as travel, including but not limited to our favorite place, Disney. Isn't this little bumblebee cute? Whether you're dreaming of flying in style or just having that bougie moment to be able to book your first class ticket, this video is going to break down the pros and the cons. Is it worth the upgrade and what would I pick for my next adventure? Stay tuned. In August of this year, my family flew from Boston to Oahu and then Oahu to LAX to visit Disneyland, so we had the opportunity to fly multiple airlines. So first up on this tour, Hawaiian Airlines. We took the longest domestic flight that you can take from Boston to Oahu, which is roughly 10-ish hours. Let me tell you, those island vibes start the moment you board the plane because the plane has ukulele music going gently and softly in the background the second you step on board, regardless of what cabin you're in. Hawaiian Airlines is known for bringing that aloha spirit to the skies and they do not disappoint. Let's start with the seats. The layout here is pretty spacious. We had the lay flat beds, the seats that then you push a button and they turn and lay down fully flat, which is perfect for a long flight all the way across the Pacific Ocean. Plus, I think that the clean, aesthetic, minimal cabin design is very calming. It's not Hawaii in your face. It's just relaxing the natural tones and the colors. So I appreciate that. I think anyone traveling to Hawaii is looking for some type of serenity. So if you can start that physically with cabin design and seat design, why not? The seat itself was really wide, and I'm only 5'2", five 5'3", five on a good day, so it was definitely long enough for a shorter body when the bed was actually lying flat. This is absolutely a win in terms of Hawaiian Air because the comfort is there. You're not just getting the first class service, which we'll get into, but your seat is actually comfortable for this very long duration. And this also felt like a non-scale victory because... I had more room on either side of my hips and my legs than I would have pre-surgery for sure. I think these seats are comfortable enough that any size body would be flexible to the space and size, but I will tell you that being five years post-op, this was a huge bonus. I felt like I had a lot of room. Next up is the food and service. Hawaiian Airlines really embraces the flavors of the island with their menu options. On this long of a flight, again, it's around 10 hours, you do get two meal choices. And in first class, your attendants ask you to order those once you are seated on board. So once you're on board and you're the first to board, they do come around just like a server in a restaurant would, and they take your 
your order for both like brunch and lunch or breakfast and lunch, however you want to frame it. And depending on the time you're flying, we were leaving in the morning and arriving in Hawaii in early evening time. I'll put the menu here on the screen, but I'm going to read to you what I had. So for my main course for that first meal, I went with the roasted broccoli mushroom and cheese frittata. I ate about half of this and then I made the mistake of bringing the rest of the half back to my parents. My parents were on the same flight, but they weren't in first class. They were in like priority seating. And it turns out that you're not allowed to pass food between the cabins, but I didn't know that at the time. This was delicious. It was protein filling. It felt fresh. I love that this comes with the warm croissant, which was delightful. I think my daughter actually ended up eating two of those. And we love the macadamia nuts so much that we actually buy them and bring them home so that we can have them when we're back on Cape Cod and remember our lovely flight experience. The prior to landing meal, I loved the panzanella salad. It was actually a little bit spicy because of the amount of garlic in it, which I had no problems with. And then Mark and I split. So I had the barbecue Korean style chicken and he got the curry. And so I took several bites of both. I actually preferred the curry, which was a surprise for me. And as for drinks on Hawaiian Airlines, I did post a photo, if you were following along on my Instagram stories, of me having a pog or pineapple mimosa very early in the morning because you do get a cocktail prior to takeoff. Um, and I will have other photos going up this week on Instagram. Make sure you're following along. But you get one cocktail slash and beverage, like a soda, a water, etc., at time of meals. So you get water throughout the flight. The attendants are really wonderful with their care of you at that time. So to make sure that you stay hydrated while you're flying, but then you get the other beverages at meal times. I always went for the mimosa option because I love pineapple juice and champagne. And my husband, Mark, went for the more traditional Mai Tai. These themed bevies just added to the ambiance of the vibes of the plane. <laughs> As for service, I simply cannot say enough good things about the staff of Hawaiian Airlines. The crew was friendly, they were welcoming, they were personable. We were the only family with a child in first class and they spent a lot of time taking care of Callie and asking her questions and making this like a special experience for her. From the themed uniforms of the Hawaiian Air staff to the cocktails, the music, the seating, and the in-service food options, this aesthetic, this vibe is so, it's unmatched. It's so unmatched that your trip out to paradise can also be paradise as well. On this flight, we also received an amenities kit, a seat cover, a blanket, and a pillow. The seat cover went over the actual seat, the laydown seat, and then you had a blanket and a pillow so that you could cuddle up and sleep if you wanted to. This also, I don't think it's a part of the amenities kit technically, but it is an amenity that Hawaiian gives you headphones and everyone gets a tablet in first class so that you can hook right up to their Wi-Fi. It's super fast and watch a variety of different things. You're welcome to bring your own devices, but even though I did, I just had them stored away knowing that I was going to get one from the airline. Even the restroom, the first class restroom, had fresh Lilikoi flower blooms underneath where the scented, the pineapple scented soap and the lotions were. So it felt like they thought about every single detail from the moment you arrive to everything a passenger might need while they're on board. Have you ever flown Hawaiian before? It's like an unparalleled experience. Now I will say that when we fly to Disney World, we're Southwest people. We're not bougie flight people all of the time, but when we have the opportunity to and the flights are long, we take advantage of that. Now we flew Hawaiian from Boston to Oahu and then Oahu to LAX. But from LAX to our leg home in Boston, we actually flew JetBlue Mint. JetBlue Mint's experience is all about like luxury and chic style, modern style, which has a very different energy than Hawaiian. I was very excited to have two different first class experiences so I could make this video and share it with you to kind of compare and contrast these two airlines. Because prior to caring about flying, 
I kind of assumed a seat was a seat, an airline was an airline, and then the more airlines I flew, I learned that there are fairly drastic differences between how they handle their customer service and their passenger care while you're on board. So when we walked into first class, what I noticed first was the cabin design. On Hawaiian, it's a 222 configuration. On JetBlue Mint, it's a individual cabin, like two rows of them. These were sleek and modern. These really were like mint cabins, not just a seat. The setup was amazing. You have your own little private door that you can close, though I think if you're on a domestic flight, they leave them open. But then you kind of angle back into your seat and all around you has been curated to be so efficient and chic. This little suite made me feel like I was flying in my own private oasis in the sky. These seats also fully reclined into a lie flat bed, though I was trying to stay awake, so I didn't really test that feature. But the amount of space that I had, like every nook and cranny was accounted for. Each cabin had its own small flat screen TV that pulled in and out. Of course, there were tray tables, but then there were also these drawers where I could put my laptop. There was a phone charger on my right. There were plugs so that I could plug everything in without needing to bend over. Like the design was so well thought out. Let's talk about the food on JetBlue Mint. Also, isn't it weird that JetBlue picked a green color to describe their luxury spaces? Why not JetBlue Cerulean? Sapphire. So JetBlue takes it up a notch with their food by offering a tapas style menu, which I love not only because I love tapas, but because I think it is perfect for bariatric tummies. You get to choose from a variety of options that are like smaller dishes. So on the menu, you can choose up to three of the four options of the small plates. And I definitely had the salad, the Sicilian square slice, and I can't remember the third item that I chose. I will say that while I loved the fact that you received different choices and had like a bunch of small items, I didn't particularly love the options on this menu like I did for the Hawaiian Airlines menu. Something different about this flight is that I felt like it was an open bar. We had two lovely attendants named Craig and Shirley, and I was drinking champagne, obviously, duh. And every time that my glass would get low and they would pass by, they would refill it. And while I love and appreciate that kind of dedication to the craft that is champagne, I definitely feel like I overindulged in a way that I didn't on Hawaiian. Arguably, it was too much wine before landing in Boston when I had to get it together to get my family home and unpacked and our house re-taken care of, all of the things I probably should have stopped drinking earlier in the flight. I was having lots of water, but I think the refilling of the champagne without any substantial protein didn't do well for me. But that's not their fault. That's not Craig and Shirley's fault. The service on the JetBlue Mint flight was also flawless. They were attentive, they weren't overbearing, they answered all of our questions. Again, because my daughter had her own cabin, she was very much like by herself and they would check in with her. She was on Mark's side, so I could kind of yell across, but because it was an afternoon into evening flight, the lights were low and people were trying to rest. So they did a really nice job making us feel comfy and cozy while we were flying. And they left us a handwritten note where that's not something Hawaiian has done before. So. How do these two airlines compare? Both Hawaiian Airlines and JetBlue Mint offer excellent first class flying experiences in my opinion, but they each bring a certain je ne sais quoi, a certain something to the table. Hawaiian Airlines is perfect if you wanna dive into that aloha spirit during the flight. If you want the flight to be a part of your vacation and you're willing to pay the price, this is hands down the airline that I will always fly 
when we're going out to Hawaii. Though, I wouldn't necessarily fly it if we were just landing on the West Coast, like in California. From the tropical designs, to the local cuisine, to the music, to the staff, I will always recommend Hawaiian Airlines. I'm pretty sure I could never recommend anything different if you're flying out to any of the Hawaiian islands. But JetBlue Mint? That's more of a sleek, modern luxury line that I really wasn't expecting. If you were looking for private, quiet, ultra comfortable, or you're trying to get some work done while you're on a flight, I think a mint cabin might be for you. I was shocked by the cabins when we walked on. It felt like something that would be reserved for transcontinental flights, and it wasn't. It was for a domestic flight. So I was really pleasantly surprised by the spaciousness and how everything was so well laid out. If I had to pick a favorite, I'm going to say that I think it depends on the experience that you're looking for. If you want that relaxed, fun vibe, it's Hawaiian. If you're looking for the chic, office from the sky vibes, it's JetBlue Mint. Ultimately, you can't go wrong with either. Flying really is for me about which or what experience will make my trip more enjoyable. And if it's a trip where I'm not looking to drop extra cash, I'm simply looking to get from point to point safely and quickly, then I'm not looking at first class options. I'm simply looking at the price of tickets. But I know for myself there are trips typically once a year where I want flying to be a part of that vacation. So that's my take on flying two different first class airlines across the country back and forth. I'd love to hear from you. Have you flown either of these airlines? Do you have recommendations for flights that I haven't done that you think I would enjoy? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bring that little bell, put the thumb thing up. Any engagement that you can do with this channel is free for you and me, but it really helps share our message and get our special love out into the world to people who have not been exposed to this channel before. So for more travel tips, pre and post op for weight loss surgery, make sure you're subscribed here, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next adventure next week when we have a new month, new holidays to celebrate. Safe travels and aloha, my friends. Bye.